and by that destiny to perform an act. What's past is prologue. What to come in yours and my discharge. William Shakespeare, The Tempest, Act 2, Scene 1. And that right there, my brothers and sisters, is for the birds. In other words, I did that for the birds. Yeah, you know the birds? You heard about the bird strikes? The bird strikes going on? Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's been a whole bunch of bird strikes here in the New York area. Um, you probably heard about the Sully Sullenberg and all of that, the plane going down in the water. You remember that? Yeah. So anyway, um, there's been a lot much more, or uh, many more bird strikes and everything. Everybody's asking, uh, what's going on with these birds? You know, and listen, I and I, uh, it a, to hit to and I sister watch, she pointed it out to me, and I want to share it with you. Listen carefully. Listen carefully, like when you hear the news, you know. First, they pointed out that, that, that the plane hit the birds. Then they point out, oh, these birds attacked the plane, you know. You'd be like, what? You know, so really, it's the planes that hit the birds. Even the pilot, if you listen to the, um, air traffic phenomenon, you know, the communication back and forth. They basically say the air traffic and the pilot says, yeah, we are, uh, and you could tell regrettably, there's a kind of a sense of regret in his voice. Um, we hit two birds or we hit a couple of birds or so forth and so on, blah, 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 right? So now today, that was yesterday actually. So today they say that there was another, they call it bird strike. It was on the bird strike. And you say, what's up with these birds? You know, like, what's up with the birds? Um, there's a brother out there, some of you might know of him. Um, there's a brother in out there, a brother out there by the name of um, Ann Poo or Anoop. I think he comes up with Anoop, Ann Poo, you know, related to the Egyptian um, Anubis, um, the, embalmer, the embalmer of ancient Egypt. Anyway, that brother, he has a series of vids out as well, and there's one particular vid that we saw, Galactic Align, and, and he's speaking about the birds, too, you know, in that. And it's very interesting, I'd say, to check it out if you haven't checked it out, not to regurgitate everything he said, but he's pointing out the birds, too. So when we saw this uh, clip about the bird strikes and everything, we thought, we said, wow, when did the brother do anything on that? So if you know the brother, or, or link with him. Let them check this out. Let them check out the bird strikes. Maybe that connects somehow with the whole, you know, the big picture, you know, the spiritual and prophetic picture of what's going on in this very time. But that portion from um, William Shakespeare, William Shakespeare's um, The Tempest, and by that destiny to perform an act, and by that destiny to perform an act, where of what's past is prologue. What has happened in the past is the prologue, you know, just... It's like not even really the introduction, but even before the introduction, in a sense. It's the, it's the prologue to the story. It's setting up the real story, setting up the beginning, in a sense. Like I said, is this a sign of the, the end or the beginning of the end or the end of the beginning? Is it the end of all these signs that we've been seeing and all that's been going on because it's the beginning to fulfill other signs to come? We see this bird strikes thing as 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 a key as a key reference a key marker you know like if you're driving down the highway and you're traveling somewhere to reach a destination and you think you're lost but if you see the sign and you recognize the sign and you remember the map you're not really lost you just have to you know follow the instructions and you know keep the faith as it were and 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 and, and do the will and you know get to the get to the, the, the safe port, as it were. Anyway, um, this book right here is called, I pointed this out before, this is called Pro Prophecies and Predictions, right? Prophecies and Predictions, right here, right? This Tim Moira, Tim Moira book, right? Prophecies and Predictions. Now, in this particular book right here, this is from Unity Press, and it was... Uh, published, this version here is copyrighted 1980. When I check this out, as you dig a little bit deeper on the like title, so forth and so on page, um, copyright page and printed page, it says down here, it says uh, Tim's Moira 1938, 
right, 1930. I don't know whether he was born in 1938 because hyphen there, but in the, li in, in the Library of Congress cataloging and publication data, it basically points this book back. It says edition 1979 was published under title The Six O'Clock Bus. So he published this in 1979, and it was called The Six O'Clock Bus. Interesting if you, if you think about that. In other words, I guess when he was looking at it, the time was at six. You know, you see that nuclear countdown kind of thing that, that, that's going on where they have it like either a quarter to or they keep moving the, the scientists with the nuclear clock. They keep moving it up and up. And now they say with the Iran thing and India and North Korea and, and, and the terrorists and everybody, whoever these terrorists are, you know, that's interpretive right there. But Anyway, they say the winner writes the story, so we'll find out, you know, when the story finally gets written, when the winners finally write the story. But for I and I, I and I, as, as the once lost but now found, Beit Israel, and as the, the, the righteous children of the King of Kings and his Christ, and all true and faithful um, followers of our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christos, or Jesus Christ, we are the winners because it's already written. It has already been written, but it has not been properly interpreted. You see, it's written, but what's the interpretation thereof? See, the prophecy, as Neo said in the Matrix movie, the prophecy is false. Not the prophecy that is written, but the interpretation that we have received up to the present dispensation. We, we say up until the coming of the King of Kings, of Kedamawi Haile Selassie, or the birth of the Son of Man, Lij Teferi, Ras Teferi. So, let's look at this again. And by that destiny to perform an act. What is that act? To perform an act whereof what's past is prologue. So we're taking this um, act two, scene one of the Tempest, and we're making a, a, a correspondence or a comparison with the good news of the King of Kings, with the good news of Haile Selassie. Now, with the bird strike thing, what's going on with the bird strikes? Well, basically, we wanted to say something about this bird strikes thing because the story was very interesting. Um, not, not extremely, but it was interesting, very interesting, because when you can see what's going on, it becomes very interesting. It almost becomes, if you are at that state of um, peace in your conscience and in Christ, though you know we're living in, in, in um, perilous times, there is still a peace in your soul because you know that it's not much longer now. You know, anything is really better for those of the righteous than how we be living now. You know, in other words, than, than the, the so-called status quo. Some are trying to keep the status quo going. So when we hear about New World Order, some are trying to um, upgrade the old world order, you know, the old age of downpression, and kind of give it a you know, given a makeover. They're trying to make over white supremacy. And it, this, this is their new world order. But the true new world order is in our B-I-B-L-E. And the bird strikes is just another indication. When you hear about the creatures and the, and, and the animal creation, you know, how they're made to be the enemy, except your pets. And then look how they treat the pets. We saw a story about the cat. There's this big fat, you talk about fat cat. The cat is fat. You know what I mean? I mean, the cat is like, they said the cat is the weight of like a five-year-old boy. I said, what? A cat? The weight of a five-year-old boy? What's going on here? And they said, well, they fed the cat like junk food and so forth and so on and hot dogs and stuff like that. And you'd be like, my goodness, what is going on? See, the animals can't say, no, I don't want that. That's not good for me. You know, people are like, hey, that's that cute? Look at that. So that's just a, a bigger... Uh, Part of, or that's just one more example of the bigger picture. Now, what do we mean by this bird strike? Well, first of all, it's interesting because they're asking, they're saying, are, why are the birds changing their flight patterns? It's, well, wait, excuse me? Why are the birds? See, it's, see what they want to do is say that we're not doing nothing bad. We're just trying to take a flight and go here and there. True. This could be very dangerous for those who are flying on planes, so forth and so on. But it really should be begging you know, the question or begging an inquiry into the bigger picture. You know, you hear them talk about Earth Day. Well, this is Earth Day. We're going to save the planet. They can't save no planet. You understand? They got to be saved. 
You understand? In the sense that they save themselves. You know, notice, they've gone from being unsaved, you understand, to now saving the planet, and they themselves, in their psychology, in their, the spirit of their heart and their mind, they are not saved. They're insane. You know, this is insane what's going on right now. So this book right here, um, Prophecy and Predictions, it talks about a lot of the, you know, a lot of the key things that now, before this was like, this was like fringe stuff. This right here was fringe stuff. This st stuff was on the fringes. You know, if you read this kind of stuff years ago, you was like a weirdo. You was like a hippie. You was like a counterculture. You was, you know, you was all these kind of things. Now, because the, the rulers, the archons, you know, they recognize, you know, more of what's going on. Now they, they say, what's the old saying? If you can't beat them, do what? You join them. So they really can't beat this, this um, desire for change and for, for something new and different since people are a little more aware about, you know, the, the downpression, the suffering, some things they know now, things that have been suppressed for, for countless decades, if not centuries, people know about. <clears throat> and with the Internet, you know, they can't hide it so much when anybody can kind of put up convincing um, information and can present their case and their story, and anything can become so-called viral in that sense, right? So um, what they've done is join this or try to get out ahead of the story. You know, you hear that saying, let's get out ahead of the story. We have to get out front, in front of the story. They do this in media a lot. A lot of media folks, they know about this. They can go into details about this and break it down, you know, as a, as a system, you know, almost scientifically, you know, that they recognize public opinion. What they have to do is put their story out there first. And this is what they've been doing for a long time. You know, they put out another story, the false prophecies, you know, that they've put out, and now people recognize, well, it doesn't seem to is happening the way um, Reverend Bacon and Pastor Pork Chops, you know, was preaching and, and teaching falsely, you know, so a lot of people strayed away from traditional whitewashed European Christianity and got into this so-called um, so New Age stuff. But like Bobby Hammett said, you know, a lot of us in the so-called um, the true black Christ consciousness or the black consciousness movement, right, as ones would call it, the black liberation movement or you know, there's many different type of names they give it. When we heard about this New Age stuff and see all these, we have to say it, white folks. But it's not because really they're white, but a lot of them are unrighteous white. You know, you know what I mean? They are not just white people, you understand, but they don't even have a sense of the truth. You know, a lot of them, like look at the 60s, they were rebelling against their parents. So a lot of black folks in the 60s thought, oh, they are on our side. And what you see is that our movement or the black liberation movement becomes like compromised, it becomes watered down, you understand, and then the black man who was the spearhead of that whole movement, he gets criminalized, he gets demonized, you know, the bad black man, and the black man does have a lot of responsibility in that, you understand, but that does not mean that wrong is not wrong, you know what I mean, that oppression, you know, downpression, and, and all that, I mean, you know, the, the issues, kind of, we can go into that. But I, I want to say at this point, bird strike, but what I'm trying to do is just give some of y'all who might not have um, um, a, a reference point, some reference points about this issue if you want to learn more about it for yourself. And you should, you know, learn about it for yourself and look up these things so you can know the truth. Christ says, ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. In other words, you've got to know the truth for yourself. Now, with the bird strikes, the immediate thing that comes to mind is this is 2012. That's the immediate thing that kind of comes to mind. And, and, you know, there's been a lot of information about 2012 and the galactic alignment, these changes, so forth and so on. That's the big theme now. And regardless of what your particular um, school of thought may be on it, everybody noticed that things have changed and things are changing. And as Haile Selassie say, the only thing that is axiomatic is change. Change begets change. So we see some changes come about, and that means that we can't go backward. What is, what, what is past, in other words, is, is prologue 
on what is happening now, but ultimately, as this character in the Tempest says, what to come? What to come? In yours and my discharge. In other words, what is to happen hereafter? Not just in the, in the hereafter, but what is to happen after this or after here, hereafter? You see, when we talk about the hereafter, people are talking about, you know, when they die, they're going to go to heaven. And you hear a lot of Christians say that. What a lot of Christians don't even know is the Bible never promises after one dies that they go to, to heaven. I mean, I mean, people will say you're, you know, you're an antichrist or you're a, a hater of Jesus or whatever like that. You're not a Christian, blah, 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 blah. Prove it in the Bible. You know, so those folks that say that, just prove it in the Bible. That's another false prophecy right there, you know. But what this book right here now um, points out for early, uh, early day and time, you know, in the early day and time, this section right here is about like the, um, the polar shifts, you know, the whole magnetic shifts. And you know there's been these earthquakes going on recently. Etna has erupted like seven times. It's been about, as of this month of April, about 13 earthquakes, although before the month is up, there could be a 14th or 15th or, or who knows. In other words, it's been like these solar flares going on. You already see that things on Earth, there's a lot of craziness. It's like people have lost their, um, their mother-loving minds, as people would um, say. So right down here, it touches on a little section I wanted to share with you in the amount of time that we have in this vid, in this vid right here. Um, it's on the subject of the polar um, switch. So with these polar shifts, they're even talking about the bees. You know, the bees, the bees that make honey and all that, and how that's important to the whole echo agricultural system, the bees, and they're saying bees are, bees are disappearing. They're not finding these bees, and bees are so important for the ecology. If they don't have the bees, then other, other crops, other things, everybody is dependent. You know, everybody is interconnected, you know, interdependent. So, I'll begin at this point right here, even though this whole book, if we could just, you know, if this, if this book was, um, what they call it, an a audio book, this would be a kind of a good audio book, you understand, you know, just to get a good listen of it. But anyway, it says the world, this is page 90, the world's daily crises of failing food supplies and economics, energy scarcity, expanding populations, and dwindling resources are not the, quote, Acts of God. Let me just repeat that for some of you all that, that might believe otherwise. The world's daily crises of failing food supplies and economies, energy scarcity, expanding populations, and dwindling resources are not the acts of God, conveniently ignored by insurance corporations. Ignorance and fear, get this, Ignorance and fear were, and still are, the culprits, along with their companions. Greed, dishonesty, and just plain stupidity. Remember, um, this is my footnote here, Michael Moore. Remember Michael Moore? You know Michael Moore, the filmmaker. He had wrote a book, Stupid White Men. This is kind of interesting. Nobody talks about that book, but Stupid White Men. You know, that's another subject matter. And just plain stupidity, a conspiracy of unconsciousness. I like that. A conspiracy. We say it's a conspiracy. Oh, that's a conspiracy. But what kind of conspiracy? Oh, Illuminati, Freemasons, you know, um, music industry. No, it's a conspiracy of unconsciousness. I think that sums it up because all of those can't come under that category, that categorization. Conspiracy of unconsciousness in which we have all held membership. That's what a lot of folks don't want to recognize, that even if they're conscious or semi-conscious or more fully conscious or, or, or whatever level of consciousness they, they may be, at one time, knowingly or unknowingly, they held membership in this collective insanity, a conspiracy of unconsciousness. The negative attributes of individuals seem to become an asset when power and profits got involved and the industrial revolution served served as an excuse that was needed to succeed and get ahead at any cost that was free enterprise free masons 
free enterprise, free until you're full. Many have begun to see technology as a user delivering convenience, efficiency, and profits in exchange for the exorbitant dues of echo side. You know, echo side, you hear people talking about bully side. No, right now what we're experiencing is echo side. Echo side and human suffering. You know, they talk about bully, the, the whole thing now is about bully, the bully thing, you know. I mean, yeah, it was wrong, it was wrong years ago. But, but, but why the change all of a sudden? And even the fact that it is a change, whether you can figure out why the change or not, it's interesting. But bullying is not just what goes on on the Internet or the Facebook or people don't like somebody or a group of, you know, a group of adolescents or adolescents in mentality all gang up on this person and make them feel bad and try to drive them to so-called kill themselves or whatever like that. This bully side is all part of white supremacy. White supremacy, the whole, I mean, America and these big countries, in a sense, they use their military might, their power, in one sense or another, or their money, to bully in the same sense. But a lot of you don't get it, you know what I mean? That's, that's the part that's interesting. It's good that people are beginning to speak against many of these injustices, but it's bad that they don't see the bigger picture, that they are members in a conspiracy of collective unconsciousness a collective unconsciousness, and many are beginning to see that technology, okay, technology as a user of delivering convenience, efficiency, and profits. That's what you hear in the news every night. Oh, how the Internet can be good for you, how you can make money online, and blah, 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 blah. And, and some of that is true, but it's in exchange for what? In exchange for your souls, the souls of, the, or, or the soul of the earth, in a sense? In exchange for the exorbitant dues of echocide, echocide killing the ecology and human suffering, estrangement from all that is natural, estrangement from everything that is natural. So Rastafari, right, the Rastafari movement that, that seems to make a point about the natural and ital and, and, and what is natural and appreciate loving what is natural because what is natural is a reflection, you understand, of the good job, you understand, or the good God that created, that is the true creator, you understand, our blameless creator, you understand, revealed, you understand, in Jesus Christos, in the person of Haile Selassie the first. Now, it goes on to say, on a diet, on a diet of natural resources, a diet of natural resources, the industrial revolution's technological offspring gave birth to corporations, conglomerates and fiscal networks so powerful that they soon transformed the face of the earth. We could say they actually soon disgraced, you understand, and disfigured, you understand, disfigured, you know, it's a transformation. What kind of disfiguring the face of the earth? It's computerized nervous system crackling with superhuman intelligence. It now demands more and more of the failing resources that spawned its genesis. It even inspires aggressive gambling for oil and nuclear addictions. Wow. I mean, I mean, that is, I mean, many of us already probably know that is so true. But it's so interesting how this was already written. You understand? This is this book right here, Prophecies and Predictions. Now, with this bird strikes thing going on, I think this is a real important sign because something is going on. They're saying, why are the birds changing their flight patterns? But they're trying to deny that this whole, um, you know, polar shift and the magnetic shift is even a reality. At the same time, they're saying, oh, there's a lot of hype around that, and there's this group or that group that's trying to get this or that, so forth and so on, and this has gone on for thousands of years, and this is just another natural cycle, nothing to get worried about, and we're seeing all these storms and other kind of weird weather phenomenon just on the, the outer level. Then the inner level of humanity, we're seeing this degeneration, this demonization. It's like a demonization demonic possession of the human being's consciousness. But look what happened first. You see, this part that we read right here concerning the pollution, concerning um, modern white supremacy, you know, or the, or the Gentile from a biblical perspective, 
we call this the Gentile world domination. And this is all biblical. This is, this is strictly based on the Bible. But as we already said, the interpretation, the former interpretation or misinterpretation was used to justify the down presses. You know, the Bible is a book, yeah. But the Bible is like, um, it's like people say, some people say it's a good book, some people say it's a bad book, some people say that it has been used, you know, to free people, others will say it has been used to um, enslave people. What's the truth about the B-I-B-L-E? Has it been used to um, free people? Well, yeah, Inez Rastafari can testify to that. You know, and not the Bible alone, you know what I'm saying, but the Bible in its revelation, Rastafari revelation concerning the conquering line of the tribe of Judah, Haile Selassie the first elect of God, king of kings of Ethiopia. Now, has it been used to enslave people? Well, yeah, we the same people bear witness that the, that the misuse or the miseducation, the misinterpretation has been used for that very same purpose. So when we look at the Bible, the Bible is like fire. You understand? It's like fire. Or it's like any other of the elements, even this technology that can be used, you understand, for beneficial or for negative purposes. So when we talk about the technology and the comparison of the technology with um, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil in, in our te Behold Technology or Technopoly series, it's very interesting. You need to check it out for yourself. But with the bird strike, we want to connect this verse right here from Romans. What we wanted to do was set it up a little bit with prophecy and predictions, you know, a little bit of what they will call um, so-called um, New Age or I don't think they really call they call New Age right here. They call it futurism. Actually, it's under a, 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 a title or a section, a categorization of um, future futurism, right? And it tells us back here, let's just... Uh, um, she has some of this, yeah, it tells us back here, it says, the period, notice what they say, the period, we're going to go to Acts of the Apostles in just a moment, so Acts of the Apostles chapter 8, so if you want to, some of you want to go there, well, we could read this together and study this together as a context to the bird strike, as well as these other animal things where animals are being demonized, animals like the beer, they're shooting the black, the black beer massacre, you know what I'm saying, we got to do this even though they admit that they're moving into beer territory. They don't have to, but they want to. So they're doing whatever they will. And now their will is really contradicting against God's will. So we're in this time of instability. You know, with them, because their will, instead of them making their wills obedient to good influences and, and, and also the, 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 the facts of the case, you know, the fact that we are in a time of change and a lot of the evidence is out there. But because of greed and those, those seven deadly you know, those seven deadly sins, or as they call it, because of that, um, that, that um, unrepentant nature, you understand, because of that, that, uh, that, that, that unconsciousness, because of that evil nature that they have willingly or unwillingly acquired, they are deaf. They're deaf like a, a, a adder, like a serpent, you know, that even though it's very charming, all of the facts, everyone should be able to recognize it, there is still, well, you know, the prophet system where instead of the almighty being the almighty, the almighty is made into the dollar, you understand? So when we look at the Bible, the Bible says that the love of money is the root of all evil. I repeat. It says that the love of money, because you hear a lot of fools out there, and they're fools. You know what I'm saying? In God's sight, they're fools. So personally, we don't really know them. They might be wise or intelligent in other ways, but if they say that money is the root of all evil people, they're fools. Because the Bible says that the love of money is the root of all evil. You understand? The love of money. You see? And when you, when you realize that truth, you know, in other words, when you really recognize what's being said there, it should and it will hopefully become clear. But then there's always the matter of choice. Because a lot of folks know what we're saying is true. You understand? A lot of the rulers know what we're saying is true. I mean, they know a lot of this evidence. That's why they also are trying to get more eco-friendly and recycle and redeem your bottles, even though you stay unredeemed. You understand? Redeem your bottles. Now they have a big campaign against um, smoking, generalized campaign against smoking. Instead of specifying the um, cigarettes, 
you understand, these, these cigarettes that the corporations make with modified and genetically engineered, you understand, tobacco to make the people who smoke, you know, the, 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 the cigarettes. You see, the, the Indians were smoking, were smoking um, what do you call it, tobacco. Tobacco is a little different than, than just cigarettes, but a lot of folks are too unconscious to even recognize that. So now people, see, the, the, the rulers who own the corporations who are polluting the environment are kind of getting your attention off of the big picture, and now you're looking at a person who might be smoking cigarettes. You understand? Um, Over-the-counter, big, big co corporation, artificial, manufactured, genetically engineered, wild tobacco, cigarettes that were made, you understand, and, and are chemically, you know, part of big pharma. Big pharma and the tobacco industry are in bed together. But instead of having... Instead of having you look at the big picture, I mean, including the cigarettes, they're trying to say they're against smoking, not a demonizing, even herb and marijuana, so forth and so on, because they don't control it. See, see, when they get to control it and control the way you see it, see, they're trying to control the hearts and the minds, the thought, you see. So they're putting out the thought about, this, about, about smoking on one level, so forth and so on, and then Bloomberg and New York, they're trying to stop people from smoking in their house. So from, why don't they illegalize these? Oh, they can't do that with the tobacco, I mean, with the cigarette companies, because the cigarette companies, you understand, are, are in a legal framework, you understand, of this demonic hierarchy, you know, of this, of this evil world, of the god of this world, of the devil, the blind god. So they don't do that. But anyway, be that as it may, that's just another kind of connective point, because it's interesting, because even though they have these same um, um, corporations and pollutions everywhere else in the products and everything, they don't tell people about it until people really get sick, until people really find out that this product or that product got them sick. You understand? And then they act like, oh, who knew? Then they find out the companies already ran the test. They knew this would happen, but they suppressed it. And then they might find somebody to finger or to kind of scapegoat about it. And that's kind of what happened with the whole um, smoking campaign. But now the smoking campaign is being made very generalized. And even though Smoking cigarettes. I and I don't, you know, we have a, a series that we wrote about um, what you smoking. You understand? Even some of the products that ones and ones who um, partake of the herbal sacrament, you have to be very careful about some of the other products that you utilize. You understand? Because a lot of it is it has been taken out of its organic or its natural sense. So forth and so on. And besides, even with herb, the scripture says all things in moderation. But that's another related issue and those who's, who've been watching um, these videos and, you know, part of this spiritual society already recognize that's another related issue. But anyway, let me just read this right here and get to the scripture part in Romans chapter, Romans chapter 8. Um, here it says the period 1975 to 2001. This is interesting. It says back here the period, remember this was written in 19, in 1980 something, right? It, it was published. 1980. It seems the person, I think they, 1938. I don't know if that's what it's saying right here. You understand that they're, that 1938, but it was previously published in 1979 called the Six O'Clock Bus. This was published in Britain called the Six O'Clock Bus. So I guess at that particular time, roughly um, 1975, the year of the, the creeping coup. You understand, and the so-called um, careless Ethiopian rev revolution or rebellion against the King of Kings and his Christ. You understand that also is around the same time. It recently we was watching something about I think it was Bill Bill Moyers or something like that um, show, and it was also talking about the same period, like with the economy and what happened with the economics. How there was a big setback for the global economy roughly in the, in the 70s as well, too, which was interesting why Ethiopia, in a sense, had to be on the world stage, had to be crucified, or had to be sacrificed, because Ethiopia, under his majesty, was in a position as Christ was and the, the Hebrew or Jewish people were, you understand, within both the Old Testament and New Testament, was God's signs, was God's witness. So this, 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 um, um, Gentile world domination or the Roman Empire, we see, we see this conflict, you know, this conflict, 
you know, um, and then it metastasizes on other levels, on its grossest level in racial, racial terms. But then it, it, it has its refined manifestations that sometimes are not seen or put together. But it's speaking about a period from 1975 to 2001, right? Roughly something like a half an hour or so. It says, has traditionally been viewed by prophets and seers. And then they mention the Indian, the, the Hopi Indians, Nostradamus, um, Meshu Sama, um, Edgar Casey, the Great Pyramid of Egypt, the Bible, and many other mentioned herein as the end of a cycle. When we talk about the end, you know, saying the end time, some people, some fools laugh it, laugh it off. You know, saying the end time because they, they have a false interpretation of what the end time means. They think that there's a time when everything will just almost like just disappear or something like that. Uh, we're not, that's not what we're saying. It's the end of a of a, of a time cycle or the end of a cycle and a time of great physical, political, and spiritual upheaval. I mean, they could have said uh, physical, it probably would have been better to say physical, uh, psychological, and spiritual upheaval because the political basically is a, a, a outworking of the, psycholog of, of the psychological, if you will, of the soul. The politics is kind of connected with the soul. That's why a lot of people who are conscious can't really put themselves in any political kind of um, 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 box, so to speak. But you understand because that's almost like a, a, a kind of a false social religion or it, it's, it's, it's an outworking of what one's um, spiritual or religious, the, the psychological, their soul is. You understand what politics and as you get into politics, and a lot of politicians and people getting into politics recognize this, if you really want to go far into politics, it's like you've got to sell your soul. You know what I'm saying? you really got to sell what you really, or you have to make yourself believe, be lie that's a word that's, that's coming back again, be lie you know. Um, you have to believe that it's not what your conscience, you have to burn out your conscience. So when the Bible talks about there's a lot of folks whose consciences have been like seared, burnt out like with a hot iron. You know what I mean? They used to know, they used to feel a way about certain things, but now they'll give you, you know, some kind of um, pragmatic or, you know, some kind of, um, you know, it's good for the economy, it's good for profits, you know, um, it's, it's, it's the man-made law, or, you know, it's always been that way, or what can we do about it, you know. And if you're one of those individuals, and, and some of those things are in us, because remember, we all have been, we all have been um, polluted, you know, it's like we, we, we come from a pure, you know what I'm saying, a pure, a pure origination as, as, as spiritual. But once we hit the rate of atmosphere, you know what I'm saying, once we hit the rate of atmosphere, we become more or less in various different related, interrelated ways polluted. You see, so, the, so true original Christianity, the, the true Christianity, not this whitewash and counterfeit Christianity, but true Christianity it, it, it speaks to the individual, you know what I'm saying, of sin, because sin is this pollution of consciousness, this physical, um, psychological, you understand, know and spiritual pollution that we're in, this mindset where some things we know are wrong, you understand, know and even, even others know it's wrong, we continue to do it because we say, well, we got to do that. If it's, not, if it's not them, then it's us and so forth and so on. And it really makes, you know, it, it makes no divine sense, you know, no divine sense about it. But um, it goes on basically some other stuff. Well, I want to get into, I want to get into the scripture because sometimes a lot of new ages, they focus a lot on, you know, what certain enlightened or even spiritually touched you know, men and people have said and kind of trifle the Bible. We're here to be a witness to the King of Kings and his Christ. And our father, Kedus Abatach, says, for my part, I glory in the Bible. So now we want to bring this now to this glory point and this penultimate of what we're saying concerning the creation, using the bird strike, you understand, kind of using the bird strike as kind of an a intro. You understand that intro into because what they're doing now is killing a lot of the birds. They're poisoning. We just heard about them poisoning pigeons. Well, they, unknown, anonymous they, 
because so far nobody has stepped forward or nobody has been found or, and probably nobody will be found. You, they might try to finger somebody or scapegoat somebody, but right now, you know, nobody's been found about the, bur about the pigeon poisoning, the whole pigeon things. And, you know, most folks will say, I, I don't like pigeons. I, why don't you like these creatures? Think about something. Something is wrong, and only creatures that we kind of like or that people kind of like in this conspiracy of unconsciousness are kind of enslaved creatures. You know, you have to kind of enslave or you have to, you know, it's like people having a cat or a dog and trying to so-called humanize them and even think that they're more human. You know, this is insanity, just straight up insanity. You know what I'm saying? But the scriptures speak to it. The scriptures say right here in Romans chapter 8, Right, Romans chapter 8, let's get to this whole chapter is so beautiful. You understand? Study this in context and for the brothers and sisters, the disciples, um, um, check out the footnotes in the Schofield Reference Bible and study the footnotes. If you study the footnotes, you'll get a better, a better understanding, you understand, of what's what. You understand? And you need to have that data, you know, like studying and reading the Bible is important so that there can be a, a, an attraction for the Holy Spirit to illuminate in our hearts and our minds. You see what I'm saying? And some folks, the Holy Spirit is trying to guide them, but they have so much filth and pollution of the thought of this world in their mind, and they don't have enough. You know, it's like, it's like credit. It's like spiritual credit. They don't even just know. It doesn't mean you have to be able to fully interpret and understand every, but they don't even have the basic, the basic script. They're not even familiar with and in the heart and the mind. They, you know, you know, they know what the world says, but they don't know what John say. You see, so when, if the Holy Spirit is saying, saying something to them, it seems foreign, it seems strange, you understand, if they are a believer, you understand, in the false gods of the world. If they are a believer in the false gods of the world, it seems strange to them, you understand. Um, but if you start to study, and if you start to, to, to use your memory, just get familiar with it. And then ask yourself and meditate on what does it mean and find other brothers and sisters, if possible, it, it is possible, but sometimes, and I want to speak to one of the brothers and some of the brothers and sisters about the point about loneliness. I might do this in another vid because sometimes we go through a, you know, um, where it's like if we really um, seek to follow Yeshua, it, it's almost like we have to um, suffer, you understand, you know, anyone who seeks to live godly will suffer. We go through certain maybe estrangement from people. We, we, we might feel on a certain level alone. You know, that's just a stage. Actually, that's, that's, just, that's a very necessary stage. I just say this right there on that loneliness point, that point of loneliness. Um, have you ever fasted for 40 days? You understand you ever put yourself in a desert for 40 days? Or you ever been in solitary for 40 days? Have you? You know what I mean? I mean, very few folks probably have. There's some folks that might have, but the majority of people, you know what I'm saying, you probably won't find, you know, two and three people in the family who have been incarcerated for 40 days or something like that, or been out in the wilderness for 40, 40 days, you know, or been in a, a state of, 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 of seeming deprivation, you know what I'm saying, or, or, or feeling estranged from as you become conscious and, and, and start to revoke your, your membership in the collective unconsciousness, you must recognize that not everybody else feels the same way, and not everybody else is experiencing it, and most of all, not everyone else is making their wills, you understand, obedient, you understand, to that pursuit of the truth, you understand, and, 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 and to that way of thinking. So um, that is... You know, that is one of the, you know, a lot of times folks who talk about Christ and Christianity, um, especially in the counterfeit and the counterfeit perversion, they make it seem like, oh, once you accept Christ, everything's wonderful, peace, joy, joy, no problem, and everything, prosperity, abundance. And that's the opposite of what's in the Bible. You know, so use that so-called lonely time. <laughs> you know what I mean? Really, I'm, I'm, I'm smiling, laughing a little bit, but, but, but you know, Joshua laughs in heaven, Psalm 2, you know what I mean? You know, but when you come to that point, even in that so-called loneliness, when you see the good of it, it's not that you begin to hate people. You don't focus on people. You focus on the master. You focus on his word. You know what I'm saying? You don't, you don't focus on any people. You deal with what you got to deal with, you know what I'm saying? But you don't focus on it. You understand? You keep your eye, so to speak, you know, you keep your eye on, 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 on the prize, 
You know what I'm saying? You keep your eye on the prize. But the sole result of the gospel is this. Now, we already discussed that many folks don't get this gospel of the King of Kings and his Christ. They don't understand the revelation of Rastafari or really even the truth of life, you understand, which is expressed in the gospel, the good news. Um, we touched on the reasons why, because the God of this world, you understand, and we touched on who is the God of this world from the Bible, from the biblical perspective. And this is real. I mean, this is all real world. No exercise. You know, the exercise is probably studying and learning. You understand? But once you recognize the truth of it, once that light, that illumination has shined in your heart and your mind, you understand? It's no longer exercise. It's real world. You know, so here at verse 14 of Romans chapter 8, it says, um, the full result of the Wengel, or the good news, the Mitmanon, you understand? The Mitmanon, one who has our main, a faithful and a true witness, not a belie either. Although in our Schofield and other materials that were written by some of the more righteous Gentiles, um, they kept the word believer. You understand? But as we study our, our pure language, the Royal Amharic and the Ethiopic and even the Hebrew and Kabbalah, we begin to really recognize the root of it is Amen. Amen. And Revelation chapter 3, 14 links that, you know, with our Ethiopian Hebrew, you understand, our Ethiopian Hebrew roots and culture of the Beta Israel. So that point being prologue, all right? Here we are right now. So the Mitmanon is a child or a son. So, so when you begin to um, receive Kabbalah, Kabbalah, the truth, you become as a son or a daughter a son and a daughter of the Almighty, you understand, of the true God, of Jah, of Yahweh, as well as an ear, as an ear. Here's what it says, right? It says, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God. Now, people, everybody's talking, oh, God, this God, that God, the next God. Yeah, there's many gods, so forth and so on. Our Father, our God is the God of gods. Our Lord is the Lord of lords. You understand? And, you know, this, this is our evidence. You understand? This is, this is what is written. You understand? And when you're conscious and clear enough, you can utilize, you can see it, you understand, and use that evidence. You can preach and proclaim it, you understand, when you're, when you're clear on that. But to put it simple for the disciples and, and to reinforce the truth, um, Yeshua, Joshua says this concerning God. He says that, well, let, let, let's actually get the scripture. Let's document it for you. It, it, there's nothing better than document. Because anybody can say anything. At least, where is it found? Give me a reference point so, so folks can learn it for themselves. That's the problem. One's has, each one of us has to, become, has to become responsible. You understand? We have to become responsible for this, um, for the truth. You understand? For the truth. You understand? The only a hero worship or the only hero you understand, is, is that dual truth of the Father and Son. You understand, of the King of Kings and it's Christ. That's, the, that's, that's Yahweh Ahad. That's, that's the one God. That's the dual truth. That's the reality. So that's the only Heru worship. You understand, if we give a brother or sister, in that sense, props, it should be in accordance with that, that willingness of them to fulfill and submit themselves to the will of God and Christ of the Father and Son and Spirit and Truth. So here in John chapter 4, documentation, documentation, John chapter 4, right? John chapter 4, verse 14. Here's where Joshua is talking to the woman at the well, the Samaritan. He says, but whosoever drinketh of the water that I give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life or into eternal life. Now, a lot of people talk about everlasting. That means it never lasts, but that's not the real etymology of the word. Everlasting, um, zelalemawi or, or zelalem or zelalem, you know, is dealing with the world and zelala is dealing with ages and cycles. So when you see here um, eternal or everlasting, in the English sense, it gets, it gets um, they give you an interpolation, not an interpretation. You understand? They don't interpret it in context. Part of the reason why is that they're coming from a language that's not really theirs, in a sense. Hebrew is an Afro-Semitic language. 
is closely related, and, and, and some of us as researchers see it as actually springing from um, the Ethiopic and the Gutas, and it's also related to the Royal Amharic. You understand? So we have, we have gateways, you understand, into the gnosis, into the knowledge, because very important for us to understand the context of the words. That's the true learning of language, understanding the context of the context of the word. So everlasting has to do with, with, with age cycles and, 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 and the heavens and the, and the, 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 the skipping world. It, it, literally, it translates to the skipping, the skipping world, so the skipping of the world or the rotation of the cycles. Anyway, the woman saith to him, Sir, you know, Sir comes from Cyrus. Just put that note down. Sir comes from Cyrus. In the, in the new volume we published on the wisdom, I keep saying wisdom because there is wisdom in it, but it, the book is called Witness, the Witness of the Stars. And please get the, you can get it now because we updated it. We advertised and spoke about it before, but we wanted to put a word there. So there's about there's an introductory note that actually touches on um, a significant um, revelation of Rastafari that is found, you understand, in that particular book. And that particular book was, was printed one year after the birth of Lich Teferi, who we identify as the son of man of prophecy. You understand, that son of Ethiopia, right? So the woman saith to him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. Joshua, Jesus, or Jesus saith to her, Go, call thy husband and come hither. The woman answered and said,